Hey, everybody. Miss Kathy back, and we're going to finish our story of Jamestown, a new world adventure. Do you rem- I don't know if you remember. Uh, lots of things have happened. Some of the things that we know uh, from the story of Pocahontas, and some we learned about Captain John Smith. Oops, did I go too far? Nope. Got to turn to the page. Do you remember what journal entry we were on? That's right. It's June 2nd. And I've got to get my glasses on so I can read it. Um, If you have not finished coloring your uh, John Smith's coat of arms, you're welcome to get your history journal back out and finish coloring that. Or if there is another page in your history journal that you didn't finish coloring or finish writing and I marked that for you, you could color that while you're listening to this story. Or you could just simply listen to the story. Here's the rest of the story of Captain John Smith and the Jamestown Colony. June 2nd. This day, Captain Smith and 14 men left Jamestown on a barge. The captain means to explore and map the entire bay of the Chesapeake. I wish to go with him, but I was told I am needed here, and so I stay. We're going to, um, when I was researching about Captain Smith, he made a ton of maps. He was a map maker. One of the, he was probably the first, uh, Westerner to make maps of the Chesapeake Bay area. Uh, Actually, so much of the New World and certainly around where he was. And we're going to actually do a map in our journal, our history journal, a little bit later. I don't think I included it in your pages, but um, that's on the coast of New England. Let's keep going. July 12th. Captain Smith is still away. We pray for his safe return. Our corn has ripened in the summer sun. Now we have fresh kernels to eat, but I wonder if we have stored enough for the winter months. And sometimes I wonder if I will ever see my wife and child again. Did Captain Smith come back, Mother? Lydia asked. Yes. Your grandfather writes that on September 7th, the captain and his men returned. Everyone thought things would be better then. And were they? asked Benjamin. For a time, yes, said his mother. Your grandfather was very happy when Captain Smith was at last elected president of the council. And on September 20th, 80 new settlers arrived, including the first two women. But the Virginia Company had not sent the blacksmiths and farmers and carpenters who were needed. Instead, they'd sent glassmakers and gold refiners. Oh, my goodness. What a... What are people who make glass and refine gold going to do in a land like this? Lydia asked her grandmother, Did they find gold? Lydia asked. In reply, her mother read again from the journal. I remember, Lydia's mother, Lydia and Benjamin's mom, was the author of this journal's child or father, mother. No, let me say that again. So Lydia and Benjamin... Their mother was Mrs. Redman, and she was the daughter of Isaiah Worth, the person who wrote the journal entries for us to read. All right, let's read on December 10th. For a week, we've been splitting logs and loading them aboard the ship. Today, it will set sail for England. We must send something back to the Virginia Company in London, even if it is only wood for roofing. There is no gold to be found here. Captain Smith has taken charge and has done much. The fort has been made larger and stronger. A storehouse and other buildings have been added. We have dug a well. Wow. Do you see how they're using hand a big handsaw? I bet when Robinson Crusoe was stuck on that island, he wished he'd had a handsaw like that. All right, let's look at the next page. The captain instructs us in military drill. He says we must be prepared to defend ourselves. Each Saturday, he parades us on the fields by the west bulwark. Then we blast away at tree stumps with our muskets for target practice. 
the Indians watch in amazement. Captain Smith may be strict, but he is fair. Everybody must work at some useful task. He has laid down the law to the gentlemen, too. Those who do not work do not eat, he says. January 30th, 1609. It is winter again and a new year. The colony has lasted through these cruel months only because of Captain Smith. When our food runs low, he goes to Powhatan. He gets corn and other goods from him. Wow. March 18th. I have no English ink left for my quill. Now you remember. Uh, actually, have we talked about this? I wish we could be together and we would use a feather a quill and some ink uh, to write just as this man is doing. Um, but let's find out what he's going to use instead of English ink. However, I prepare a brownish broth of dried berries. It serves well enough and it does not fade. So he took berries that he found in the woods, uh, crushed them up, and um, probably mix them with water, maybe boiling water if he could get it, if he could make it, or uh, certainly some kind of warm water. And he said, and it, it works for ink. Hmm. You think we could do something like that? Could you do something like that at home? I bet. Take a look at this picture. Princess Pocahontas still visits us often. She teaches us the way her people fish and plant corn. Her laughter is merry to hear. Captain Smith, like all of us, is very fond of her. So she was helping. I guess that's a picture of her back there with Captain Smith. Looks like they still have him dressed in his fancy gentleman clothes, but I have a feeling he probably didn't really wear those very long. And the men had to learn how to, the Indians had to teach them how to spear fish. Keep going. June 28th. We face starvation once more. Rats infest our storehouse of corn. We had counted on this supply of food to last until the autumn harvest ripens. Some men have been sent to Point Comfort to fish. Some have gone downstream to catch oysters. July 22nd. It is very hot. Disease has broken out again. The men grow lazy and discouraged. Discouraged. They refuse to work or gather food, but the captain will not allow this truly. He keeps our colony to get together with his great will and strength. August 12th. Boy, time is passing. It's almost about a month in between each time he's entered and uh, written a little bit more in his journal. Yesterday, six ships anchored at Jamestown. They were battered and weather-beaten. They are part of a large relief supply sent by the Virginia Company. Unfortunately, the flagship, the Sea Venture, was blown off course near Bermuda. Some fear the Sea Venture's passengers are lost forever. The ships that did arrive brought 300 new settlers. Surely we need them, but we have not so much as a roof to cover their heads. And they are ill-prepared for life here. How shall we feed them when winter comes? Boy, that's the truth. They're not ill-prepared means they're not ready. They don't understand what life there is going to be like. It's not going to be like their civilized home in England. They're going to have to work really hard to gather food, to eke out an existence. But let's see what happens. August 30th. People are taking sides for or against Captain Smith. We old men know we owe him our lives, so we will never desert him. Surely this colony could not survive without him. Oh, boy. Wonder what's going to happen. September 3rd. Captain Smith has been injured. While he was out on the barge, his powder bag exploded. <gasps> the men carried him back to the fort, dead to the fort, more dead than alive. We pray for his recovery. So I guess this is a picture of them carrying him. And other men just, oh, upset. October 3rd. Today, Captain Smith was taken aboard one of the ships. He must sail for England. He has no other choice. With his painful injuries, he cannot carry on. But how shall we survive without him? What happened then, asked Benjamin. 
Listen to what your grandfather writes, replied his mother. She turned a page in the journal and began to read. Let's see this picture. I guess it's showing a picture of Captain Smith setting sail off with several other ships. And they're in one of the bulwarks, one of the corners, where the, a cannon is of the fort. Take a look at that picture. That would have been kind of fun to color that picture. I should have made a copy of it. I'm sorry, guys. November 16th. Things are worse in Jamestown now that Captain Smith is gone. Food is scarce. Some of the new settlers have already died. Our leaders fight among themselves. No one leads. There is no one to deal with Powhatan and his people. Our leaders are cruel to the Indians, so they turn against us. They bring no more food. They attack us in the forest. Forest, they know that Smith is gone, and Pocahontas comes no more. Oh, dear. January 4th, 1610. Midwinter. We are starving to death. Men will do anything for food. They eat I any living things, dogs, cats, snakes, mice. When these are gone, they eat leather and clothing. Some wander into the forest and are killed by the Indians. Some go off to live with the Indians, and they are, they are never seen again. The dead are the fortunate ones. Their suffering is over. Wow. They need Jesus. They need to pray. I wonder if they have been. Boy, they need some help. February 25th. This is truly the starving time. I can hardly stand from weakness. When Captain Smith departed, there were 500 of us. There are, I think, but 100 left now. For food today, I found some young hazel logs. I stripped away the green bark and chewed it for the juices. My wife and daughter are much in my thoughts. God bless them and keep them, and God help me. Julia Redfield stopped reading for a moment. The children were silent. Then Lydia asked, What happened to Grandfather? I know that he did not come back to England. No, your grandfather did not leave the colony, said Mrs. Redfield. Here I will read the final entry. And she turned to the last yellowed page in the journal. Oh, no. May 11th, 1610. I feel I must write these last words in this record. This is not the hand of Isaiah Worth. It is his good friend, Angus Murchison. The time of the great starving is past, but Israel did not survive. Two days after he last put his quill to paper, he left the fort with some others to search for food. They never returned. The loss of Israel has saddened us all. He always labored hard. He did not complain. Gentlemen and commoners alike respected him. You may be proud of that. Jamestown could not have survived without men like Israel Worth. And Jamestown has survived. New settlers and supplies have arrived. We who are left are but a few scarecrows, but we will try again, and we will succeed. I will see that these papers reach Israel's wife in England. God save and keep our colony. I think Grandfather Worth was a very brave man, said Lydia. I think perhaps they all were, said Benjamin. And that is the end of our story of Jamestown. As I said, it's a little different perspective than we got from Pocahontas. Um, let's see. Let me have a few questions to ask you about uh, after we read this. What are some of the changes that Captain John Smith made in um, once he became the president of the council? What did he make people do? Make everyone. Everyone, if they were going to get to eat, what did they have to do? They had to work. Remember that? And um, he had everyone also... 
what else did he? What uh, what's another change he had? He helped make the fort larger and stronger. And what did he do? What did he have them build in particular to keep their grain and food in through the winter? That's right. He had them build a storehouse and other buildings. And what did he have them dig so they could have fresh water? Yes, a well. They should have done that immediately when they first got there. What else did he have them do? Remember, it showed a picture of the uh, one of the men firing his musket. He had them practice their uh, military drills. He says, just going to read back, he says we must be prepared to defend ourselves. So each Saturday, what did he have them do? Parade or practice by the West Bulwark. And where did they shoot their muskets into? What did they fire them into? The forest, into the trees. It was probably way off back in the distance. Um, let's see. Just a question. Take a look at this picture. What did Isaiah Worth, who wrote the journal, use when his English ink ran out? Do you remember? The picture gives you a hint. Dried berries. That's right. And who taught the Englishman how to fish in the Indian way? Pocahontas and obviously Indian warriors or braves that were willing to help. Um, what did it ended up happening to Captain Smith that he had to go back to England? Do you remember? His gunpowder went off and it caused an explosion. And uh, remember in Pocahontas we read Captain Smith was actually in England that at the same time that Pocahontas and um, her husband, John Rolfe, went to England. And you've already colored that picture uh, about Pocahontas meeting the king and queen of England. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this story. And I will see you later today. Uh, with some fraction lessons. All right. Bye-bye.